so Mark Mohammed. I'm a resource at the Morgan State University. Any Morganites in the house? So we partner with the National Association of Mom Entrepreneurs to do this event in what we call Growth Beyond Me. And it's an opportunity for you all to network with each other, but also to develop some systems that you can put in place so that you're not really doing business by yourself. Uh, so I'm glad to be a part of this. Uh, my twin over here is Dr. Tamara Lucas. Uh, she is one of the founders of the National Association of Mom Entrepreneurs as well as one of the co-founders of the Q Cohort. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Lucas. Hello, everyone. Hi. Thank you guys for coming. It's been a, a hectic day, so if I seem like I'm trying to, I, I taught five, four places today, so I'm trying to woosah, okay? So I need a moment, and I can't drink wine, so I really need a moment. Um, but welcome uh, to the group Beyond Me the first of 2023. Super excited to have you all. Thank you guys for visiting our wonderful space. So we got time after um, after the event, you can, you know, check it out and see what we offer. We're now the largest black women owned co-working space in the United States. <laughs>
like I said, we'll have the QR code at the front for you to um, for you to apply. And then next month, to all my moms and women in the room, we are going to be doing more social events for our organization. So our first one is a Galentine's Day event. Um, it's a cooking class at Scola. It's only 20 spaces, and you can, I'll also have the QR code up front if you want to, and you'll get an email with all of this information as well, but I know y'all check out emails like that, or y'all ignore them, but um, it's a QR code up, up front to register, and that's on February the 15th. So, excited, come join, I'll be there. And yeah, so I want to introduce Jerika Chambers. Oh, we do that. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. <clears throat> oh, no, I told you I'm like cloudy right now. I want to thank our board members in the room. Stand up. Our board president is here. Thank you. Jania is our vice president. Kaylin, thank you for all your hard work. Jay and Austin, always showing up. I appreciate it. But Jerika Chambers, um, anybody, and everybody that wanted to participate in the pitch competition so signed up? After this, we're going to have a pitch competition. So we have. She know. ready. Okay, so we have four. How many, how many people signed up already? One, two, three, four. I didn't sign up already. Oh, five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Edit this out. Uh, awesome. Hey, Keisha. <laughs> How many people? Four or five? Don't try this at home, y'all. Four. All right, four. We, can take, we can take one, one more. more. <laughs> one more. So just go up and sign up. Absolutely. All right, All right so we, we do this every month, uh, which we do micro grants uh, that's coming from Morgan State University. Uh, we need to raise some more money, though. Mm -hmm. We need to raise some more money. But nonetheless, we'll do the pitch competition right after this, right before the Knicks and the Lakers. You know, we should be <laughs> Now, Jerika. So, <laughs> Jerika Chambers is a, well, she's a retired, as of today, actually, makeup artist, but she's also been able to build a community for moms. And so, I asked Jerika to come on. Um, board with us, ordained to you, put together these events. And so this is her first event that she did. No, actually this is the second event that she did, but officially, this is the first event. My goal is for y'all not to see me, okay? I need to be in my bed. And so um, I'm going to bring Jerika up. I'll let her introduce herself. She's going to take it from here. I'm going to go hide out so I can get y'all QR code stuff. Okay? Thank you. Okay, perfect. So, did you want me to 
Yeah. All right, so I'll kick it off with a little introduction. My name is Anika Stokes. I am a co-founder of A Clean Start Primary and Urgent Care. I'm also a wellness advocate, and I'm here because I'm an IG storyteller. I use my marketing degree from Morgan State, and I already know we have some bears in the house, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> um, to connect my community to brands, people, and places that I love and trust. So with that, let's get to it. Okay, let's get to it. So let's hop right into it. How did you get into the content creation in Fulton World? Like, did you? Were you set out to do it? Was it something that you set out to do, or it just kind of like fell in your lap? Oh no, it fell in my lap. I am, um, before we opened our business, I was a secret squirrel. I had no social media presence. Um, I did not want anybody to take pictures, post anything. I'm a very private person. But when we opened our business, I was told emphatically that we needed a social media presence. You know, having a website is cool, but as you all know, you hear about a business, you want to look at their Instagram. You want to see who's following them. You want to see what they're posting about. You want to know who the family is behind the brand. So that's really how we got started. We have two pages, a Clean Start Medical Group, and then Last Name Stokes. Last Name Stokes has exploded. We're at 93,000. <laughs> but it's not bought. It was very organic. It was very intentional. And we've only been on IG, I'd say, maybe three, four years. I'm looking at my good thing right there. My husband, like, fact check me. Um, but it really came about from storytelling. And I see a lot of people from my community in here today. So it was not something I set out to do, but I feel like we all have influence. That's why I don't like the word influencer. I feel like that's something somebody calls you but that's not something I set out to be. I am someone with influence who happens to monetize that influence. And because I monetize it, I feel like there's a responsibility that comes along with what I am trying to influence or encourage you all to do, be places to visit. It has to be some place that I love, that I trust, that I have a lived experience with, that consistently delivers on its brand promise, you know, we don't do it for a clickbait. We don't do it for money. We're not selling our soul. So I want people to understand that we're building community. So when I say 93,000 followers, those are 93,000 people in our community. We're in the DMs. We talk all the time, spilling all the tea. And when I have a good fashion find, they're gone. When I'm talking about a good restaurant, they're visiting. And then they're sharing stuff with me. If they see something I posted and it's on sale, they're letting me know so I can let the community know. Um, the fact that we have so many people from our community here today speaks volumes on a rainy Tuesday evening. Yes. They still came out. Raise your hand if you're here for the Nika. Yeah! <laughs> Because I feel like with content creation, no matter what field you're in, you should be creating content, whether you deliver a service, um, whether you sell a product, even if a lot of people just like to create content just day to day, right? So when people say, I don't know where to start, what, like, what would you say to them when they say, I don't know where to start? Because it can seem like a lot, right? You, you're doing everything. you got your personal life your business, your career, you got the kids. Where is a safe place to start, a safe, comfortable place to start with content creation? And you mean someone who wants to do content creation and make money? Or are you talking about someone who just wants to create content? Because there's so, a difference. Well, both. Okay, so I would say if you want to be a content creator and make money, you cannot have a private profile. You can't. You need to be a public profile. Um, I don't even follow back anybody who has a private unless I personally know you because I don't know what you got going on behind that page. So I would say that's number one. Number two, start with what you have. Do not feel like you need to go out and buy a whole bunch of equipment that you don't even know how to use and think that that is going to make you somehow be able to monetize. So I begrudgingly upgraded to the new iPhone because I love my old yeah, I iPhone. Get rid of mine yeah, like, um, I would say if you have an iPhone or a phone, use that to create your content. 
Stop thinking about content as something that has to be manufactured. So when you saw me taking, or you saw my husband taking pictures, I'm telling a story of what it is that I wore here, what it was like here. Um, I don't know if you, if you saw my stories earlier, I did a little video of the aftermath of me trying to figure out what I was gonna wear. And it was, I had torn my closet apart. That's content. Stop overthinking the content creation process. Um, yes, my feed is curated, absolutely. I, I like things to look a certain way, but people feel like I'm relatable and that they know me because it's like, oh, she tear her closet, closet apart too when she's trying to find something to wear? Oh, she has trouble doing X, Y, Z just like I do? If you just capture the moments that you're living, your lived experience, and then curate what you want to share, that's content creation right there. Um, and then I would say, have boundaries. Don't get caught up in this being authentic. Being authentic does not mean telling everybody, oh, your damn business is alone. It does not mean sharing and oversharing to try to relate. There are a lot of people who feel like they know me because I share, and that, that's great. But I have a mantra that I say all the time. I share the feelings, not the facts. Share the feeling. You don't have to share the facts. So I can say, like every other relationship, we have our disagreements. What I'm not going to do is get on IG and tell y'all what we disagree about. What I am going to do is let you know that in a healthy marriage, you're going to disagree. But in a healthy marriage, you can get through your conflict. I can talk about grief, and everybody can relate to the feeling of grief, right? Whether you've lost a person, whether you whether you're grieving your former self, we can all relate to the feeling, even if I don't feel like divulging what in particular I'm grieving. If you focus on trying to evoke a feeling, you'll get a lot further and be able to maintain your privacy in the social media age. So if, you, if people think about it, yeah, she does talk about the feelings a lot, but I really don't know what's going on with her, as you should, because it's my business. <laughs> um, and I feel like we, I would encourage everybody to do more of that. And then you have your boundaries in place. So as you blow up, because you will, you'll find your community. Your community will find you. You won't feel like when something goes bump in the night, now I have to overshare or now I have to divulge certain things because I've shared all of this. And now people want to know, what's the tea? Yeah, yeah I, I, I definitely like that and piggyback off of that. That's how, I mean, even though I, I have a pretty small following, but I will say I have a community, and that's what I focus on. I don't focus on the numbers. Um, people can relate to me, moms can relate to me, because I show the, the raw, like you said, I don't show everything. I don't show, I may show, oh, me and my son is going to therapy, but I may not show the reason why we're going to therapy, you know? So, but moms can relate to me because I'm showing y'all when I'm looking crazy, I'm sick, but I still gotta pick up my son from school. But I'm also showing y'all when I'm getting myself together for date night, you know, and just giving myself that mom time. So don't always focus. I know content creation and looking at these influencer pages, it just looks like everything is so curated. But like you said, I don't have the fancy closet, I don't have the fancy furniture in, in my house. But what I do have is a clean little corner that I put up a little plant, and that's my area. I don't even really have that much natural light in my house, but go outside sometimes and um, just create it for you and just be consistent. That's another thing. And I want to stop talking right now because I want y'all to start talking to us to ask us some questions because how many content creators, slash influencers, or even inspiring, whether you do it for fashion, your business, your personal, how many do we have in the room? Raise your hand. Gotta raise the hand. Okay. okay. Village. So, what up? Do you guys have any questions or topics that y'all want us to cover um, as far as content creation and influencing goals? Yes. When it's for your business and it's not like a lifestyle type business, how do you balance, you know, showing the person behind the brain versus focusing on your business itself? Do you want me to go first? You can. Um, so I do that because I, I, I do that with two different pages. So I have some people who follow just our family page, Last Name Stokes. 
and some people follow both. And then some people honestly just follow a Clean Start Medical Group because that's all they're interested in. They don't care about my family. They don't care about what we're doing on the weekends. They don't care about what I'm wearing. And oftentimes I don't uh, post the same things across. So my content strategy is strictly for the page that I'm posting on. And I find that to work really well because then I'm zeroing in on that audience. I'm not trying to make something fit an audience that does not care about that because that's not why they follow me. So if you have your content pillars, um, I'd say, if you can, I know some people having two pages is a lot, mm -hmm. um, but if you are able to segregate them and create messaging that's tailored, it would probably be much easier than trying to make it fit across both. And then from a consistency standpoint, consistent doesn't mean posting every day. Consistency means creating a cadence that works for you and your business and your audience and showing up in that way. So I haven't posted on the feed for last name Stokes. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> so what happened was I, I did a reel styling a white shirt, a white shirt. It is blown up. It took me from 82,000 to 93,000. I said, all right, I'm, I'm gonna let that ride out. And then I've been focusing on other things, so I'm in the stories mm -hmm. on that page. But what I want you to also focus on is, it's not about the likes, it's honestly not about the followers if it's a business. I'm always about what, what am I producing? The income. Likes don't pay no bills. Yeah. So that shirt, we sold that bad boy out and now they've restocked that shirt. And guess who's making money every time somebody buys that shirt? Me and the sweater and the belt and that that's what that's what it's about and people are loving it so it's a shirt that I bought that I styled that I wear that I recommended but because I'm on LTK every time somebody buys it I'm making money on my business page I'm talking about the fat burner boost every time you don't have to like it but I'm they're booking it they're booking the injections they're booking it. And, and that's when you go from being somebody who's worried about vanity metrics to a businesswoman. And that's why I say you have to be strategic about what you post. Mm -hmm. I, there are plenty of memes I like. Plenty of memes that I send to my friends. You will never see them on my page. <laughs> no. There are plenty of things I'm like, yes, girl, yes. You will never see me repost it because it's not on brand. And it doesn't fit with the messaging that I'm putting out to my audience. And when they come to my page, I want them to know it's my page. I can guarantee you, somebody can hear a quote or read a caption that has been following last name so can be like, I know that was Anika. I know that was her. That sounds like her. That feels like her. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want. That's when you're really building community. So I have two pages as well, but if you can, if you're not the type of person who wants to build a personal brand, then you can try to do it all on your business page or try to do like some behind the scenes. Say for instance, you sell a shirt, you have a t-shirt brand. You can show behind the scenes of you, you know, shipping them out or packing them or um, like you said, your stores, you can show yourself on the stories if you don't want to show yourself in the feed. But I will say, building a personal brand is key. It, it, I mean, it's not an end all be all, like you don't really have to do it to have a successful business, but I would say it really, really helps you because people connect with the person first before they will connect with your product. So having two pages, even though it's a pain in the butt, um, but trying to be consistent and strategic with those pages will definitely help build your personal brand and your business. So that's what I do. Yes. So um, for me, I travel a lot now and I feel like I always travel for like different experiences, whether it be trying like a new restaurant or going to a concert or things like that. So I'm just not good at like documenting it. And I'm normally travel by myself, so I don't have like a person to be like, hey girl, capture this or hey do that. So like what are some suggestions for like just getting started if that's something that I wanted to do? It's like capturing those moments. And as far as the profit from it type thing, when you did the shirt, was it like, oh let me contact, did I like tag the company, like like how did this, all that work? Because I mean I believe me and pay, but I also want to catch yourself too. So I just kinda wanna know like 
where I'm stuck because I, I just feel like I had my own business and that's something separate, but like this is like something that I'm just realizing like I'm a whole vibe wherever I go. I like so yeah. I wanna show other people that you can be a vibe just by yourself and then also have a good time with yourself. So many people are like, Well, I ain't gonna go because I ain't gonna go with baby, tick already book. Mm-hmm. If y'all wanna go, here's the itinerary, but I'm not waiting for anyone. So I wanna kinda like be that person to kinda encourage you or like I love that. I love mm-hmm. that. And that's, that was such a part right in the air. Mm-hmm. You okay. get dressed, you're not waking on nobody, you're going to take them solo trips. Mm-hmm. So that's your storyline, right? So you can be out with your iPhone and taking clips and stuff, little clips, just record everything because that's what I do. I'll record everything, even things that I think, I don't know, this is done, but I'm still recording it because when I get home and I'm sitting down, I can put everything together. You don't have to rush it and do it okay. and say, put it out the same like day. No, just record everything, little clips and stuff, long clips and stuff. You see Anika's husband right here, he's re- recording her talking, he's recording her outfit, and she will put this together later. Oh, yeah. She will put it all together later. So that's what you do and get you a tripod. You don't have to get all this expensive stuff. Go to Amazon. <laughs> yes, get you a tripod and just be safe if you're by yourself. Be safe when you're setting it up, maybe outside, and get a quick little, quick little pictures, videos, and and I know, speaking to you, um, if you ask a question about how you get paid, I know for me, um, we both are on like to know it. I'm not sure if you ever heard of the app, but you can sign up for it. But I think you gotta have somebody to refer you that's already on the app. No, you don't. You don't? Oh, you don't know you know more? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you're not. When I signed up, I did. Like, you, okay. you can sign up and um, to the question. No, I didn't have to ask anyone you I found the if, once you get into the like to know it app you find the product you link the product mm-hmm. and then you direct encourage people to click the link so some ways you can do that is, you know don't post where you got it from and then tell them you know you can find outfit deets on my shop like to know it you know follow me there I have a highlight on my page where I have all my fashion so I direct people there. If they ask me, I'll DM the link to them. And most of the time, even if you tell them I got it from XYZ, they still want you, they want your link. Yeah. They, they want and you to do the work for them. They want you to do the work. So what's, what's the call, what's the reference number? What's the actual, they want your link. They do, so you don't have to encourage them much. And then you are getting them into the habit of looking in your highlights. You're getting, I've had people find my page for the first time. I direct them to the highlight and they done bought three, four, five different things because they're just going through the highlight, put, putting stuff in their car. Um, and you're helping them. Mm-hmm. Because what I find is there are people who are going to buy it because they have a similar body type, because they like their style. Mm-hmm. And those, the, the, I love those people. Then there's other people who I gotta style it first. I have to show them mm-hmm. three different ways to style it. Mm-hmm. And I love those people too. And I always say three different ways because it's an investment. I don't care if it's $2 or $200. Mm-hmm. It's right. an investment. I want you to know that you can rewear it. Mm-hmm. So I try to style things three different ways. Mm-hmm. And then by the time, now it's sold out. Because now everybody's like, oh, I can really, really rock this. Yeah. And now they're mad because you feel like, no, 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 they didn't mad that they didn't get it when I first told them. Right. I said get it because it's going to sell out. And now I didn't style it. And, I, and to that end, don't feel like you got post in real time. That was the other right. thing. I, mean, I never post in real time. Mm-hmm. You, you also want to like not get caught up and not enjoy the moment. Right. Really and you want to be safe. Because yeah. it's weirdos out here. Uh-huh. So don't feel like you gotta post in real time. Uh-huh. So when Jerika was saying, like, take your clips, build your story. Yeah. So you may want to tell a story about your trip, and maybe in the stories you want to post daily, and then you do a roundup reel afterwards. Like, yo, y'all gotta go here, and this is what I did, and this is our itinerary, and then uh-huh. you start doing that, and hotels will start flying you out. Restaurants will start coming up. You know, they they want your they want your secret sauce, baby. Thank you for that. Thank so you. I was looking, I wanted to add something to what she asked. So one of the things that I witnessed with people who are really successful with social media is that sometimes you have to decide whether or not you are going to be purposeful in the moment. So if you're someone who enjoys the moment, right, you have to make a decision on whether or not this is something that you want to share. Mm-hmm. 
And if it is something that you want to share, then you also have to be relentless about getting content. So you can't halfway do it so that by the time you get home or a few days later, you don't have enough content to chop up and to post. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you can enjoy the moment, but you have to enjoy it through the lens of your recording device. Okay. And so I know some people can't reconcile. My sister is that way. People who I don't think anybody knows me, they know my sister. She's not someone who is really good for recording in the moment. So a lot of the amazing experiences that she has, nobody knows that she's had those experiences and they make excellent content. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't record because she's so busy enjoying the moment. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide what your purpose is gonna be when you go to an event. Is it something that you want to share? And so that means that you will be enjoying it, but you'll be enjoying it through the lens of your phone or your camera or whatever you choose, you know, to record it. I love that. So I love but, that. you know, some things are personal and you don't wanna you don't wanna share and you don't wanna you don't want to be the one with the phone not recording. But if you're at a concert or you're doing you're going to a restaurant, then you make a decision this is going to be a content day for me, or this is going to be a content outing for me. And so then some things are just for you, but then some things are content. And create the memories. Like even if you don't share it, there's plenty of things I record that I don't share. And then if you are out with others and you are being purposeful, like I knew I wouldn't be able to record myself. My husband's been recording me. You know, sometimes you bring a wing person for that reason, or they know when food comes to the table, give me a second. So I now, because I'm a foodie, I need to enjoy my food. But I do want to record and be purposeful about recording the moment of like, you know, food coming to the table. But then we're going to devour it and I'm going, you know, I'm about my pants and we're going to have a good time. Yeah, that's... Oh. Coach, yeah. I want to one. Yes. <laughs> so I want to say I thank you for saying that I'm 62. I'm the one that, wrote, that just went out and purchased a lot of equipment. I know mean, not know what I'm doing. I have an Android. It took me a hundred years to figure this thing out. But I'm the one that takes really bad pictures. I don't capture the moment. But what had happened to me, uh, Tamara was my my professor. I got the mortgage and. The jobs fell, and I found myself in the college and that fifth degree didn't know what I was doing. So I met Omar and Tamara. And um, long story short, I started blogging. Like every paper I would turn on, you see, you're a writer. Mm -hmm. So I started blogging. Then I started podcasting and had a lot of talk about. So I made the family talk. I stopped because my mom died in my arms for the seven days. Mm -hmm. I did not know that I was grieving so bad that I dropped down from 185 to 95 and made that. So I just started back up, and I told her last year. This all happened in one year. And um, I, bought, I purchased the equipment on my YouTube. A lot of people like it because I call myself a geriatric because I don't know how to do this stuff, the technology, <laughs> and the, the pictures, and everything like you're saying. Nothing was clear, but it was the content everybody could relate. When I went live, I got a lot of hits. But a lot of people complained on YouTube, you couldn't see it. So my husband treated me and got a scrub, and he got a professional person. He said, he's now going to be my sponsor. But when I watch you all on your Instagram, your IG, and your YouTube, what have you, I do see that you have two or three more pages. I get complimented. I get overwhelmed with that. Um, just being here, you guys inspired me. Okay, because me with an ostomy bag did not want to come out and be around anyone. But I'm learning how to let go of this and get more of this. And I really wanted to applaud you because you're making it both of you, uh, the content creator, slash, or just like what is real, what you need to post in. Don't overpost. Make sure you take time and sit, sit back and gather your thoughts. But, um, yeah, this is a good place to be, and I'm inspired. And I have like 724 people following me. I know. I
I'll, use, I'll say my experience. I started both Instagram and Facebook at the same time, and no shade to Facebook, but Facebook just felt like a bad group chat to me. Yeah. It just, ooh, I, so I, I have come it's up off of that. Older people. Oh, okay. <laughs> on Instagram and I tried to do that one thing well I didn't want to overwhelm myself and try to be all things to everybody because you know to go to YouTube the content is horizontal but uh, Instagram is vertical and you have different audiences yeah. so what I found to be helpful especially because I was new I chose one and one chose me and tried to get comfortable there and now I'm just about to launch our YouTube because what I found was what I liked about Instagram, I feel like it would carry over well to YouTube. Mm -hmm. I enjoy content creation. Mm -hmm. So let, let me start there. If you don't enjoy it, mm -hmm. it's, it's gonna be, it's, it's, it's gonna be hard. <laughs> it's going to be hard, but I enjoy it. It's fun for me. Mm -hmm. It is a creative outlet. Mm -hmm. With that said, I never wanted to take on too much because I'm a wife and I am a mom, yeah. and I am a daughter, and I am an entrepreneur outside of the content creation. That is one stream of income, not my only and not my main. Mm -hmm. So just being real with you, if you can find some comfort in one and build your muscle in it, I think then to go out into the next one, you can sit back and strategically say, what would be the next best platform for me where I can take what I do well here and continue to do that well there. Because as you know, every platform is continually changing. Yeah. It's continually changing. Um, but then I, I see a lot of people burn themselves out because they're trying to do YouTube and Instagram and be the master of um, Twitter. And you know, it, it, it can be a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same for me. Um, try to um, just do one. Okay. Instagram, I'm, I'm tipping my toe into TikTok a little bit, but it's hard, like it's, it's, it's different than Instagram, it's a different audience, so I just, I'm sticking with Instagram and still, I feel like I, I found my sweet spot, so I'm trying to stay there for right now, mostly, and I will also say, I'll give this tip, because um, content creation can consume you, and it has consumed me before, and that's what you're thinking about, and so you, you know, when you're out, when you're in a house, but what I had to do was come up with a plan, and sometimes plans don't work for people, but for me it works, come up with a day where you're doing your content creation, when you're taking your pictures. Come up with a day when you're editing, you know, come up with a day when you're, you know, just come up with a day when you're doing certain things so it don't feel like it's consuming. Good question. If you either one your hands are fighting down is the burnout. Like, I feel like we all sometimes take a break. <laughs> you know, but you know, sometimes you take a long break, like, dang, and I come up with transparency. Folks, like, girl, you seen me since 2019. You know, like, hey, girl, what are you doing? Like, yeah, like, yeah, like, break more yeah. often. Break more often. I don't feel like I honestly, my community knows I'm gonna take my break, I'm gonna go live my life, and I stay really active in the story. That, that's where the magic happens. The magic happens in the story. We chit chat, we shoot the shit in the stories. We, and so, even if you're not on the feed, try to be more active in the stories. That's where you can show up as your truer self, I think. It's a lot easier. Um, but whenever I take a break, I don't announce when I'm taking a break because my business, so we sell things to like gear and stuff, that continues to go out even when I'm breaking because it's a business. You know what I mean? Like, when the CEO of Gap is on vacation, you still can go to Gap, right? <laughs> so I don't have to announce when I'm on vacation because stuff is still gonna ship. We still won't accept your payment. You can still come into our clinic. But when I come back, I also don't announce I'm back. I would hope you have other people that you follow to entertain, educate, inspire you. That when I get back, you're gonna be ready for me. And we're gonna have the same refreshing content and we're gonna pick up where we left off. So if you're getting burnt out, I think the antidote to that is to break more often. So on the weekends, I often don't really post. I might get something banging out on Saturday. And I I don't work as much during the week. But our clinic is open on Saturdays and Sundays when everybody else partying. 
So on Saturdays and Sundays, I'm gonna put a bang out Saturday. You might not hear from me again until Tuesday. Y'all gonna be all right, though. We gonna be all right, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't don't let content creation burn you out. That doesn't serve you, and it doesn't serve your audience. It serves no one. Yeah. Take your breaks, and also make sure you're doing things other than content creation to help your mental health. You know, what are you reading? What does your self-care look like? Who else are you following? Don't follow all content creators. Yeah. Follow other people. I don't even like following a lot of people who do the same thing as me because I feel like in some shape, form, or fashion, it's going to be embedded in my brain and I'm going to try to, you know, look, try to live up to that. So I try to follow other people that are in different, you know, uh, professions and doing different things and I get inspiration from them. Like, oh, I can take a little piece of that, oh, she, you know, and move that to what I'm doing. So just try to follow different people. Somebody have a question? No, I just wanted to piggyback. One tip I would suggest, I have a, an account that I just follow maybe 10 inspo accounts. Not people who are in the same industry, but people who I'm inspired by. The reason why that's important is when I open up my app, that's the page it opens up to. It does not open up to last name Stokes. And when I close out of the app, I go to that page and close out purposely. I'm being intentional. The reason why is because when I log on to Instagram, I don't want to be bombarded. I don't want to be bombarded by DMs. I want to get my inspo before I go attack. Uh -huh. so, so me opening up to that page is like, okay. So sometimes I'll log on and look at that page, and I don't even log in to Last Name Stokes or Clean Start Medical Group. But I'm, I'm, it's like a boundary for me. And those are people who maybe they are pouring into me, like the things, the quotes that they say, or maybe accounts that are teaching accounts, you know, social media marketing accounts. And sometimes if you follow them from your regular page, you're following all these other people, it gets lost and you don't see their, I wanna make sure I see their content. So I would say if you do that, don't make it any more than 10, 15, because again, you don't want to overload yourself, but that has helped me tremendously make sure that when I'm logging into IG, it's a safe space that I'm logging into, and then I can intentionally, if I want to, go into my other pages to do work. Because those other pages, they're work. When I'm on Instagram, I'm a creator. That's why when I'm on TikTok, I, I just consume. I have no intention of creating. It's such a fun place to be just to watch other people. Um, all right, I just wanted to tag that in because when you talk about the mental health yeah. accounts, would you say somebody had a question? Yeah, we want to say one last question and we want to wrap it up. Yes, Omar saying no, but I'll say yes. Someone has a question. Did you have one? Oh, someone over here. Oh. The lights are off at 8 o'clock. It's not really a question, but I wanted to just to attest to the education in the story. So I had a mental health open space for and I had a business page and a personal page. So my personal page, I talk a lot about just a variety of different stuff. And if people relate to me more in my stories than when I'm actually posting mental health stuff. Like one is it's a hard topic that people want to engage and talk about all the time. But I talk about like dating stories, random stories, what book I'm reading. Mm -hmm. And people really just come in into my DMs and we get to chat and I get to meet people in the community and establish different connections. So I always test that the magic pack is not kind of that works for me because I was getting discouraged like, why aren't people commenting on the post? Like I am looking for the engagement. But people are really engaging in the stories and they start to see what authentic self and you kind of just talking about regular stuff that's going on in your life. Yeah, we're speaking out. Thank y'all so much. I love how we are so interactive. I appreciate that y'all. But before we go yeah, I want everybody to get their phones out really quick for me. Get your phones out, please. Okay, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, let me get my phone. Everybody get your phones out. You know, y'all gotta follow all of us, y'all know. Can we get up? Oh, okay. So, Instagram. Let me get my phone. Can you get my phone? Oh, okay. So, last name Stokes. Instagram. Yep, Instagram. Last name Stokes. Don't follow me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> like me. Last name Stokes. And then, um, if you're interested in primary, urgent care, mental health, then a clean start medical group. And then my, you have the dinner room? Let me know a few minutes. <laughs> Got it?
Okay, and then mine is Jerika. I'll spell the first name J E R R I K A underscore Chambers. Okay, and then from there you'll see in my bio my mom page as well. And then we had the Cube co work. You know, I was going to play. Oh, no, you got The Cube co work. Y'all got a lot of pages, too. Yes. Just Okay, so you have the Cube co work. And then, is it just name? It's name. Entrepreneur. N A M E. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Name for Yeah, yeah. 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 no, 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 so it's E that E D A C per North. All right. So the funder E that per North. All right. E that per North. So I believe my Instagram. I think the intern said we have Instagram and Facebook. I don't do. I don't do social media. I push a button and the interns do it. 